Why grow mushrooms? It's like, people eat them. Tasty, good for you. What are they good for? Um, high in protein, dry weight, uh, full profile of amino acids, stimulate immune system. A lot of them are immunomodulators, which is great. Those are some of the highlights. Elixir. Yep. Yep. So it's not just humans that benefit, a lot of insects. Yep. Okay. Any other reasons to grow mushrooms? You can do it in the dark. Do it in the dark, create good soil. Mm -hmm. Use secondary byproducts. Cool. Yeah, that's some good mushroom reasons to grow mushrooms. I'm going to like do a little skip right here. Everyone close your eyes. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to come back to this, but we're just starting with logs. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Log cultivation is primarily used for growing shiitake, Lentinola idotes. Shiitake. Remember the second I in shiitake. Okay, it's not shit-take. It's, <laughs> it's she. And she is an evergreen oak tree that grows in Japan. And take is a Japanese name for mushroom. Right? So it's a mushroom that grows on this evergreen oak tree. And that's why you commonly hear that people are like, oh yeah, like mushrooms, logs, oaks, like something like that, right? And the shiitake has evolved to grow on a, um, the, same, the same genus, Corcus, that we have here in uh, North America. So it's most commonly grown on oaks. It also does well on beech, uh, sugar maple, red maple, um, and okay on birch as well. Um, yeah, really tasty mushroom, um, pretty meaty. I love uh, shiitakes that are grown outdoors. They have a really good consistency, really good flavor, particularly in the shoulder seasons in like April, May, and October, November. This mushroom right here is, in Japan, they, they grade their mushrooms, right? So it's not just like a shiitake is a shiitake. They'll have shiitakes from $4 a pound to $20 a pound. And this is a grade called Donko, where it starts to get that um, cracking on the cap. It's a really like one of the highest grades. It's really good and happens when you have fluctuations in temperature and humidity on those shoulder seasons. So really only get it with outdoor cultivation. Um, but a bunch of different benefits, drawbacks of log cultivation. I'd say the biggest one, you can just do it outside in your backyard. It's pretty easy to start. You don't need a lot of money or equipment or anything like that. Um, relatively easy to scale up. Um, one of the, probably the biggest drawbacks that I get from a lot of people is that it takes a while, right? So you're, you're waiting at least 12 to 18 months before you start to get fruit. You know, and a lot of people, like when I'm selling mushrooms, they're like, wait, what? I gotta wait a year? Like, come on. I want mushrooms now. Um, so, uh, yeah, and the other thing is it's seasonal, right? So fruiting is typically from June through October uh, is when you can get reliable fruiting. And so if you're looking at it in terms of a business model, that can fit in really, really well, depending on your business model. Or um, you might need uh, more reliability, year-round production. Okay, so let's get into the nitty-gritty. Um, there's a bunch of other mushrooms you can grow on logs too. Okay, I'm going to focus on shiitake, but this same process can be used for oyster, lion's mane, reishi, chestnut, uh, nameko. There's a bunch of different species that can be grown on logs. A lot of times it's just different. Um, you want to match up the species of wood you're growing with this, the strain species of uh, mushroom that you're growing. Um, okay. So, sourcing logs, that's going to be step one, right? We just had that big, big storm just came through. You've probably seen all the trees on the road. Great, great uh, opportunity for growing mushrooms on logs. Um, ideally, you want three, uh, three to eight inch diameter logs and about three to four feet long. Uh, and like all this stuff is just guidelines, just general guidelines, but it makes it easy makes the process easy and, and doable. You can go shorter, shorter logs, but they tend to dry out faster. 
Uh, you can go bigger logs, either longer or larger diameter, but you got to have big muscles because these you move, you're moving around a lot. So, um, and if you go smaller, they tend to dry out a lot too in diameter. Um, for for wood species with shiitakes, mainly oak, sugar maple, beech, maybe birch. Those are like the main ones to go with. If you have other uh, tree species that you want to grow on, I would recommend oysters. They grow on a really wide range of uh, trees. Um, not a lot grows on conifers. So your pines and hemlocks, there's not a lot of um, uh, mu edible mushrooms that are grown on those. Uh, there's Rishi, Ganoderma suge, which grows here on hemlocks, um, but it's very abundant in the wild, so I haven't really seen anyone growing it in cultivation. On, on hemlock. Um, okay, ideal cut time is, is from like around January through March. And the most important thing with log cultivation is maintaining moisture content. So, lo so logs, when they're fresh cut, are somewhere around like 50, 55 percent moisture content. And we want to maintain somewhere between like 55 and 40 percent. So when the logs are cut, two important things. One, keep them out of the sun, and two, keep them off the ground. So keeping it out of the sun, keep it so that it's dry, right? You could put it on a pallet and tarp it. You could put it on the north side of a, of a um, building, uh, whatever it may be. Just, just keep them uh, uh, moist. Um, the other thing, keep them off the ground. Um, if the logs are touching, like, you like walk through the forest, right? You see a log on the ground. What's happening to it? Rotting, yes. Bugs. Bugs, yes. We want to control what is rotting the log, right? So there's, there's all these native fungi just, just abundant in our uh, surrounding environment that will decompose that log if it's just outside. And if, when it's touching the ground, it makes uh, uh, the bark really wet and easy for the native fungi to come up and start to consume the log. So we want to keep the outside of the log dry but the inside moist. Do you ever recommend soaking them? Soaking is going to come later. Okay. I, I'd, I'd never really soak them before I inoculate. Um, you could if they, if they were like baking in the sun, maybe if um, you got them from someone else. I was like, I have no idea what happened to these. Yeah, soaking them for 12 hours or something before you inoculate could be a good, good strategy to boost up that moisture content. Um, and this is, these, this is ideal, okay, if you have like this big oak tree that falls in your yard in June, totally use it, totally use it. Um, Cornell, Cornell has done a lot of good research on log cultivation. They have a good handout, some sweet videos on their website. Um, and one of the studies they did looked at yield compared to time of inoculation. And the spring was a little bit higher, the summer was a little lower, fall was kind of like in between. Um, so this isn't only sourcing logs at this, this time. Last thing I'll say about the logs is it's important that the bark is intact. Right? The bark acts as this armor, this, this like skin that keeps the log uh, dry and keeps other fungi out. Right? The bark doesn't have a lot of um, cellulose in it, what a lot of the fungi are going after. So you want a log that has its bark intact. It'll keep the water in, keep other fungi out. Yes, yes, using fresh cut logs, ideally like within a month of being cut. Mm -hmm. We're all on board? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. <laughs>